CCNA Security ASA Firewalls Dual ISP. In this video we want to talk about a really interesting feature. It's, it is a pretty obvious feature on a Cisco router. On an ASA firewall you need a license for that. We're talking about the primary and the backup connection. That is something that you will see in many different places when people when people you know we want to have more than one ISP of course if possible we want to combine that with the failover right two ASAs two ISPs that would be a perfect scenario in this lecture I want to show you how you can enable that option on an ASA 5505 how to verify it's up and running play with it and we'll take it from there you can see the topology on the screen I decided to create a lab because I want to show you how you can do that at home as well of course you can use GNS3 I recommend you go for for a real ASA that's why I, I I prepared a lab for you I want to show you how you can play with that feature at home as well please note we have an ASA 5505 over here that is our LAN local area network 10.7.7.0 the laptop is .2 it is connected to port fast ethernet 02 on that ASA then we have two ISPs ISP1 and ISP2 two Cisco routers to simulate a network behind that router I created a loopback interface 8888 on both routers then I connected the ASA firewall to both routers this is going to be our primary path ISP2 is our backup path the idea is to set up ASA in a way that when I start a ping command on that laptop ping 8888 when I start that command what I want to achieve I want to I want my ASA to recognize I'm going to shut down this guy ASA should recognize oh I can't ping the ISP1 I, I cannot ping ISP1 I should start using ISP2 that is why I used the same loopback interface on both routers thanks to that we can do a failover test in many cases that's how we call it a failover test you want to test it in the real world what you can do you can just unplug a cable here or behind your ISP test it that way in most cases of course you don't have access to that router still you should be able to just unplug a cable that that will do the trick hope it makes sense to make sure we're on the same page I'm pretty sure it's it's really obvious I I recorded uh, I I recorded how I set up that router here we go let's set up router 1 ISP 1 loopback interface 8888 IP address 1111 I'm pretty sure there is something on that router here we go I think IPS is running hope it's Cisco yes okay show IP interface brief okay we have an IP address which is okay 1.1.1.1 we don't need that interface well disable it shut it down 
Let me do show run interface F00. Yeah, let's get rid of IPS. Okay. Interface F01 shut show IP interface brief. Good, we've got 1.1.1.1 for F00. This one is shut down, that's fine. We need a loopback interface as well. Let's create it then. Let me make sure that we've got section. Good, we have Telnet enabled. We might need that if we want to do a failover test. We need access to that router. Okay, let's change it host name uh, that is ISP1 okay that looks good uh, let me show IP root good yeah we don't need anything here we'll enable NAT on on the ASA file okay that was pretty simple now we will move to ASA 5505. There should be some basic configuration on it. We'll see and take it from there. I'm I'm pretty sure there is an IP address assigned to it, maybe not. I don't really remember. We'll we'll check it and create everything that we need. Okay, let's start ASDM. Of course, we are going to use ASDM. However, I will show you a few commands from the CLI as well. ASDM is almost ready. Come on. Okay. Actually, let's go to the CLI and type show interface IP brief. Okay, we have VLAN 1, which is our local area network. Nothing else. Okay, that's fine. show root we have a default root but it's a wrong IP address it's not a big problem we'll fix it ASDM is ready let's move it Ooh. okay we are running ASA version 9.0 that's fine ASDM 7.0 it's okay. It is really important to check your license. That's what we're after. Dual ISPs, right? You have to have the Security Plus license on an ASA 5505. And of course, you have to check all other ASAs if you have that feature in place. Unfortunately, it is licensed. Let's check our interfaces. Okay, we've got 10.7.7.1, that's our LAN. Let's check our topology. Okay, E0 should be 1.1.1.2. E1 will be 2.2.2.2. Two, 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 two. This is an ASA 5505. I'm not sure if you remember. 
it has a built-in switch. It means we will we will use VLANs on it, right? Let's just resize this guy. Here we go. Let's add. No, let's edit that one first. We want to use the static IP address 1.1.1.2, right? That is our ISP one. Okay, yeah, go away. Now we need an interface for this guy E one. That is E one. Okay. Let's call it outside backup. Of course, zero IP address will be 2.2.2.2. That is ISP2. Okay. Yeah, I was pretty sure it would happen. I, in the real world, I, I prefer to do that from the CLI. ASDM will create strange VLANs. Of course, here it would make sense to create VLAN 2, not 12. I'm, I'm okay with that. In the real world, you could just copy that, change it to VLAN 2, and apply it from the CLI. Okay, let's check if we have any firewall rules. There's nothing here. NAT. Ah, we don't have NAT in place. We need that. We need a NAT rule for our primary and backup connection. Let's create that then. That is our LAN. I like to be as specific as possible. I know a lot of people put here yeah, any whatever, any interface. I don't like it. I like to be as specific as possible. From inside to outside. Okay, let's create a NAT rule for our backup connection. Let's call it NAT. Oops. Backup is the same subnet. We want to hide behind our outside backup interface this time. We are going from inside to outside backup. Okay, again, from inside to outside. I want to NAT it, hide it behind the IP address of this interface, inside to outside backup. I want to do the same, right? We need two rules like that. Let's check service policy, make sure that ICMP is allowed. It's not. Okay. We need that. Do we need anything else? Uh, well, we need a static root. Is there anything? Yeah, th there was, right? Let's let's change it to 1.1.1.1, right? We're talking about this root now, right? That is 1.1.1.1 is our default gateway we use outside and for outside backup we'll use 2.2.2.1 we'll do that in a moment that should be enough to ping something let's try and ping 8.8.8.8 .8 okay time is one millisecond that indicates i go to 
to that router. It's not because this laptop is connected to the internet. Be very careful when you create an IP address like that because you can say, oh yeah, it is working and you are actually pinging Google DNS server, right? Make sure that it is your local IP address. That's fine. We have our outside root. Okay, that's there's nothing new in here. That is all we have to do to start with that feature will continue in part two.